Ah, yeah, it's working. I can do a mic check, though. Mic check. It's coming in a little bit low, though. I don't know if I can fix that. <clears throat> Aside from eating the mic. And there's definitely latency. Not that it matters. <laughs> yeah, I can see it on the little Twitch app right there, I guess. Let's see. Maybe tip. It's annoying. Hey, what's up? Okay, so then let's get started. So, I know it's hard to hear me, but uh, this is Farm Fable, new at, uh, mobile farm sim uh, on your Android iPhone. I personally feel it uh, really fills the gap that uh, farm sims kind of left us with over the years, such as Harvest Moon, you know, Stardew Valley, although. A great fun game still 2d so it's left to be desired you know it hits that old mark of the original harvest moon and then you know you had your old school um what is it farmville when facebook originally came out i mean who even knows what happened to that nowadays right you get, they even came out with a farmville too and you know you don't hear anybody talk about it i don't get any more farmville requests so uh, other things have come out, you know, my time in Port, uh, Portia, I think is the proper way of saying it, which really isn't a farm sim, it's more of a build kind of farm sim. Um, but this uh, kind of hits on the mark of, again, what you used to do in Farmville, but with that 3D up close and personal fill that Harvest Moon, like a wonderful life had. You play a Harvest Moon game now, and I think there's even a mobile version of the game, and I think I've played it a couple times. Back in the day, um, when I first got this phone, <laughs> and uh, I can tell you that it, it's just like playing on um, on the Switch. The, uh, what is it? Uh, something Tune? I can't remember the exact name of that version of Harvest Moon, because... It was just such a big turn off for me, but it was the exact same gameplay and feel. It was top down, which is kind of a regression from what Harvest Moon used to be. You know, like I remember back on, I think it was PlayStation 2, one of the better versions of Harvest Moon came out. And although simplistic, not a lot of detail, and how to play the game, it was fantastic. And again, this, this kind of hits on that mark. So when you first start off, and I have been playing for a while, so I've got a, quite a bit saved up, but. We'll get in that in a minute. But when you first start off, you'll start in a village. And this gentleman right here, the village elder, he'll greet you saying, you know, that you're the pot potential successor for uh, the goddess, which um, I kind of blew through the tutorial, to be honest, because I was so excited to get to it. But from my understanding is you're, you're pretty much trying to become the successor for the village as, as their goddess, or for, for the goddess. And there's other farmers, which are other players, trying to do the exact same. So, he will give you a task, lead you to your farm. And uh, another cool thing is, there's two ways. You can either tap, which is what I prefer to do, or you can use a joystick to move around. But you'll leave the village, and just across the way is where your farm starts. Now you start off with 
a single plot as you can see I've got four going right now but you'll start off with a plot and I should have gone ahead and put everything back where it was but you'll start off with a house that looks like this um, it's a little dilapidated when you first get it and you can upgrade it later on um, you'll also have an owl cabin and we'll get into what that's for here in a minute and then you will also have a barn which again this one is fixed up but the one you uh, first started will be again run down and then most people don't know this but there's two broken lamp posts on your first plot that you can fix up um, which uh, when you're doing quest and you're first starting off uh, from the missions table here a lot of times it'll ask you to go ahead and um, finish building a building now decorations for whatever reason in this game are considered a building so uh, and there's an easy way around that but when you're first starting off when you're getting that finishing those two lamp posts count so if you get a chance go ahead and take care of those first if I'm correct though they're a bit on the pricey side as far as resources when you're first starting out to fix but I mean if you haven't noticed them right off the bat then why not go ahead and fix them up but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put those back where they belong if I can even figure out what I did with them there we go there's gonna be like one here and I think the other one is on the back side of your lot okay so when you're first playing you'll run into this guy uh, Master Gabe, Gabe the Marvelous, has come to assist you, and he kind of walks you through the tutorial of how to get your farm set up. And there's several levels, quests, missions, orders, whatever you want to call them for this game. Uh, but pretty much the first thing you're going to do is crops. You know what, there's also... So there's also a well, but we'll all, again get to that later. So you, I believe you start off with, I can't remember if it's 16 or 20 um, squares available to you for cropland. And that goes up, and then as you progress, let's say via VIP, um, you can earn more that way, as well as leveling up, and then certain plots when you unlock them, and we'll get into that later. Um, also gives you more crop uh, cropland to work with. Um, I have 26. I'm, as you can see up there, VIP 7. So when I'm doing farmland, I kind of prefer to do that old style that you would do in Harvest Moon to effectively get the most area out of out of what you were doing. So you would always do it in kind of in a square motion, and you can hold long hold to move things around. Boom. All right. So yeah, if you remember Harvest Moon, you'd always do it in kind of like a square motion, cut out the center. I think that's still the case for some mobile games like Stardew Valley and such. And then over here, I always set this off to the side as special crops crops that take a long time to to uh, to complete so whether it be a tree that takes eight hours or um, bananas strawberries anything that takes a long period of time I always set that off to the side just um, not saying I don't use the other plots for that but it just makes things easier uh, when you start off you'll start off with wheat and beets and uh, you'll use that to make feed for your barn animals and we'll get into how that works. But uh, first off, let's go ahead and put something that's uh, bananas. So bananas take 20 minutes. And that's another thing I like. You can just hold down, drag over the spaces you want to use. And uh, just check and see if anything, if y'all are saying anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can h click, drag, to what you want to use and it kind of autopilots and fills everything out now that being said some decorations will and you know it's a, bit, a brand new game so it's a bit buggy um, but a couple decorations will prevent you from highlighting everything you want 
We'll put wheat here. Doo -doo -doo. And then down here, let's go ahead and do beads. Another thing, when you first start off the game, you're going to have cust uh, character customization. And you got to look close because you'll miss. Because there's, there's not too much information right off the bat on exactly how to do it. But, uh, you know what, let's go ahead and look at that right now. Because it's, it's going to be like the first thing you do anyways. So when you start off, um, I believe there are four different clothing options um, and believe it or not they're titled there's uh, Viking style um, I believe there's Arabian style um, Japanese and I think Chinese style uh, clothing sets or whatever and I mean they're pretty they're pretty interesting I prefer of course this is your your basic and there's some that you can even buy later on um, First thing you'll do is there's a special pack. It's a small dollar amount um, that'll give you this, uh, which is what I've worked with for a while. Uh, you can see there's a cowboy outfit. We'll get into that other stuff. This is a reward here. Um, but uh, you first off, you start off with face. And there's a couple presets, like in most games. Skin tone. And what most people don't realize is you can really change the skin tone. Like there's there's a whole list here. Um, but you'll also see there's sliders and I at first didn't realize this. I had to go back and change my character and character changes are free up until level 20 after which you're locked in and you have to use special tickets to change your appearance but upper eyelids hair um, like I said there's most people don't even know that there's a scroll wheel there but you know they don't tell you, you gotta figure it out on your own um, you can zoom in and out at any point when you're doing that all right. See, wheat grows pretty fast. Same thing with harvesting. You can just long drag and it'll... Yeah. Now, another thing uh, when it comes to farming basics is water. You're going to have a well on your, on your farm. Um, and I actually have to go get mine. I removed everything. Oh, I thought I removed everything. I removed everything so we could uh, start fresh for this playthrough. Oh, maybe it did pick it up. Well, oh, it sure did. Okay. So you're also going to have a well on your farm. Boom, this thing right here. Uh, now, it says level 2 up near the top where it says, well, I can't remember if I had to upgrade it or not, but I assume as this game starts to pick up steam, you know, and they develop it more, there'll be options to upgrade it because you can get small water. As you can see, you can collect three. I think at max it's 24 a day, something to that effect. Um, and it tells you the time frame. You can do three at a time. But those are small waters. And... Um, pretty much they reduce one minute. Actually, let's go to my bag here and take a look. So right here, water greatly reduces comps. Uh, I guess it's going to tell you on this screen here. So this is a spring water S, so small. I haven't seen a large, but I assume if you at some point upgrade um, your well, you'll get mediums and large. The only way I know to get mediums is either as a reward or from watering somebody else's uh, uh, crops. So as you can see there, it says it reduces it by one minute. I personally, as you can see, save mine for the most part. When I first started, I didn't. But I save them just to use on other people's farms. It helps them reduce their time, um, unless I'm working with somebody to reduce the time on mine. And you can only do 10 on another person's anyways. Um, the mediums can actually water up to three crops at a time. And as you can see, they do three minutes um, time reduction so like if you're if you're just starting out and you're really trying to get the ball moving pretty fast yeah go ahead and use what you got so you can get those crops going because you use cr your crops that you have on hand are what you use to plant so if I have 
173 and I plant these right uh, I need to do something but uh, yeah perfect But as you can see, that number from 173 went down to 163. So I, I planted 10. That's that's what I get. But I should get, um, I think, double that back. And as you progress, again, w via VIP level, certain items that will actually increase the amount of um, of uh, resources you get when you harvest crops and and other resources. <clears throat> So as to that effect, I just want to get into what resources are. So it's not something you should really c concern yourself with right off the bat unless decoration is all you really are looking to do as far as the sim goes. But um, your plot you're, that you're going to start off with has, it's a one-stop shop for, for all the items you can possibly collect as far as resources go. Um, and most resources are meant for either one upgrading your tools or B um, creating decorations um, so you can see here's the stone you can click on the I which gives you information output information you can see the, and you can even tap on the items and get more information about it though it's not much but um, the big thing is with stone you're looking to get iron ore right off the bat to uh, upgrade your tools and then uh, let's see here there we go level one wood um, two big things you're gonna be focused on when you're hunting for wood is just plain wood and hardwood the other two oak wood and pine wood to me at least are easy gets but the other two are required for just about every single decoration that you need that you can build and then they have wild hemp which is flowers, grass, which are used to make scarecrows, that kind of stuff. Rope. <clears throat> All right. So after you've talked with Master Gabe, you get your farm going. He's going to give you the task of putting in, one, a feed factory. And then after that, he will have you put in an animal shelter. <clears throat> Now, in the feed, um, when it comes to feed, what you would end up doing is you'd start off with cow. These other ones wouldn't be there yet, but cow feed. Now, cow feed is 100 and, uh, I have 163 wheat. It requires two. And when you start off, you won't have four of these circles. It's just two. You can use one of the game's currencies, gems, to unlock more. So we'll go ahead and do three to start. I'm going too fast if anybody is here watching. I can't see from this screen. But if anybody is watching and you have questions, be sure to be sure to ask. Or stop in at the farm and say hello if you're currently playing the game. Caveman, if you're there, feel free to I don't know. Come make ugly emotes at me. I don't care, dude. <clears throat> See if I can speed this up. Nah. We'll wait. Okay. So while we're waiting for the feed to finish, um, we'll go ahead and... Alright, so here you have the warehouse, which is your barn. Um, so there's two ways of getting to that. One is, of course, clicking on the building. And there's two bags. There's the bag, that's what you have on you. It shows you all your plot shards, special items, etc. And then you have your warehouse, which... All crops, animal products, seafood, resources. So seafood is anything you catch while fishing. Um, the fishing in the game is kind of lacking at the moment. It doesn't matter if you get a perfect cast or if you leave your your your, uh, your lure in the water 
for a while. It doesn't matter. You may catch a big fish. You may catch a small fish. There's no guarantee. It's completely random. But at this current point in time, there's no real effect to it. Um, but the only items you can catch from your farm at first are the blowfish, blue blowfish, blackfish, and the shrimp. Worms are what you use to, uh, earthworms are what you use to fish with. Uh, you can buy those from Sailor John. We'll get to him later. Um, but you can also craft some bait as well. Um, you can also get earthworms from harvesting wild hemp. In fact, let's go look at it. Earthworms, wild hemp, bellflower, morning glory, and thorny safflower. All right, let's look at the map. So on the map, you'll see there's a total of four that are unlocked currently. The price is currently a little absorbent. Uh, eh. It's a little bit high. That is because, again, it's a new game. They're trying to kind of curb that, hey, I'm the first player. Let me just max everything out as, as fast as I possibly can. So I'm the top dog. So how I feel like they try to handle the situation as they went ahead and rolled this out. Um, there's just a couple things that are just crazily overpriced. Um, you're going to get your second plot in very quickly because as you level up, it's part of pretty much part of the tutorial in how to unlock a new plot. Um, and it's always going to be this one right here. Oh, and you can move from the mini map if you weren't aware. <laughs> um, uh, the ones below that, you can only unlock that's what's adjacent to what you already have unlocked. Um, so technically speaking, if I wanted to leave this middle section out, this middle section right here out, I could just go around it. Don't even have to unlock it. I could just have a nice wooded area that I can't even access right smack in the middle of my farm. Uh, but as you can see down here, it says 30,000. Um, also requires level 20. So there's a level requirement, um, but there's also uh, an exorbitant amount of money that you have to put into it. The first one you get, again, part of the quest, a tutorial. Um, the third one is going to cost you about 3000 And you think, oh, I can get that real quick. You really can't. Not unless you just hammer, hammer, hammer at, at orders, cargo, and we'll get into that again later as we progress. Um, don't know how long this series will be, but we'll try to prolong it as much as I can. Right, caveman? Anywho. Uh, so the next one would be 10,000, 30,000. I assume the next one would be either 40 or 50, and it just would progress from there. Um, as you can see, these ones out here in the far back with the X's, um, that means that they're not even available. And I assume at some point... That'll be an extension of the game, adding more. But uh, at this time, I don't see that happening. Let's see, somebody said something. <laughs> Thanks, Dev. Okay. So. And we'll get to that screen in a minute as well. Let's see if anything done. Okay. So, one of the feeds have completed. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so, you can click on it from here or how it was hovering above... Uh, the feed store, you can even click on it from there. Um, and they can all finish, and you can click on it just without even opening up the menu, and it'll open it up. Um, one thing about having VIP, you can't see it right now, but these arrows, um, based on how many buildings you have, you don't have to walk to every single one of them. When you first start off, you're going to have to. There's no way around that. I think it's around VIP three, no, yeah, three or four. It gives you the option of just scrolling through. It makes the game a lot easier. Um, and I think think that first pack gets you to VIP 2. Again, it's like 99 cents, at least here in the U.S. Um, and then whatever tax, you know, your mobile provider will charge you for using a card. So a dollar eight, dollar ten, twelve, something like that. Um, but anyways, um, you'll get your feed and you'll go to your animal shelter. Cow's milk is what that would create so from after the process is over as you can see it takes about eight minutes it even tells you how many you have in stock both on this screen here and down below where you can see the cow's head 
So you just drag it to this middle circle, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I'd feel better if you could pull it to the actual circle you want it in and then hit like a start button. Because sometimes you want to change around like what goes first or remove something. And I feel that if, if it hasn't started and you still got two hours until one of your items is done, you should have the ability to remove something that's only five minutes and replace it with something else. You know what I'm saying? But again, as you can see, you can use gems down here to unlock more uh, space. Um, you start off with two on every single building. I'd say that if you get the gems and you don't plan on increasing your VIP points, go ahead and do that because it makes, um, it makes the process of the game go faster or at least more profitable. So when you do that, it'll spawn a cow on your farm, which um, animal looks towards you in anticipation. Stroke it. There you go. And people say right now that that doesn't really do anything. Um, there are special animals that can appear under the right conditions. And I feel that if you have those animals out of the same type and you continue to do that, treat them, treat them right, and show them affection, you have a better chance at seeing those special animals, which I have seen two or three so far, actually, because they give you special items. Let's take a look. Two. So I've seen two of them so far. Um, so while you're doing that, that'll continue to create... Um, go on now the cow does disappear afterwards why it doesn't make much sense to me i think that if you have an animal shelter you should be able to have your animals on your farm all the time and well i'll show you the reason why for that as well um there's a farm you can go to where the animals are always there but on your farm once they're done processing that's the end of it um let's see let's go to our warehouse so the next thing you're going to end up with is the bakery which is an odd thing to start off with but what's this whatever so you end up with a bakery set it down right here boom so once you head to the bakery you'll see here you can create a loaf of uh, a bread loaf of bread whatever you want to call it um that costs of course your wheat and that decreases your amount it takes four minutes Let's see i could use some more Go ahead and do a whole row of it. Okay. So, your farm's kicked off. It's starting to go really good. You, you're growing crops. Uh, you've got some animals processing what you need, milk. Uh, you've got a bakery growing, so, you know, you're, you're making produce. What do you do with this produce? So, <clears throat> this little arrow right here off to the side is one, your task your semi-task menu since there's two of them and then your orders menu so you can kind of see from here a mini version of it and you can click on it if you can complete it but if you actually tap on it where it says order you can see all the orders that you're getting so and that's from the villagers in your town and they added a little bit of flavor in there where it tells you what it's for shopkeeper lily uh, early memories and I'm sure hopefully down the road they add story to that and a little bit more flavored text when you're talking to uh, these characters I think it would be it would be nice it would be more in depth for the game let me hydrate there we go <clears throat> so uh, let's see We this one here uh, somebody finished it for me thank you Mr. All right, they helped me complete the order. Now you can see down below what the rewards are. So the rewards are a currency that you can trade at ice field areas on the world map. Now, I call them tokens. Um, they just call it currency, I guess. But there's three different types of tokens um, for trade. And that is ice field, uh, grassland, and desert. And I believe at some later date they're adding stone and forest um as as some of them they might even add beach or who knows what else because once we get to the world map you'll see the world is 
quite large for what it is for a mobile game. Um, so let's go ahead and complete this. So you'll complete this. That's how you earn your gold as well as experience points. Um, another way to earn experience points is just, just harvesting things, where you're harvesting your crops, produce, any of that, um, and then completing your tasks for the day. Now, task menu, again, they've got a mini task menu. And then when you click on that calendar up above, you have a larger task menu, which is broken into two sections. You've got story and then daily. Now, when you're doing your dailies, you can't see it on my screen right now, um, but it'll list off what you need to do. Gather four resources, fish two times, um, receive two blowfish. Now, um, when you're doing order, or when you're doing these uh, tasks, one thing to keep in mind, and that it took me a, a while to understand, is when it says um, produce two items from any building or um, gather two, uh, two items from animal processing, right? It doesn't mean to actually collect it from the building. It means to add it to the building process. So you're adding the uh, three breads to the, the time queue. You're not collecting those items from the time queue, which is a very important distinction because when you're sitting there trying to figure out why it's not accepting it, well, now you know. Um, oh, that's not good. Let's sit down for a minute. I'm walking back and forth. <clears throat> Talking at length is uh, not my strong suit. Let me hydrate again. <laughs> All right. So as you'll see, there's chest up above. So some of these, I know it's so low, some of these um, tasks have a whole other type of currency. They look like suns, little sundials. And actually, they look kind of like this sun right here almost. Now, what those do are, there should be, I think, five or six in a day. Um, those will unlock those chests that you saw up above. And those will give you tokens. Um, Coupons, I think, is that what they're called? Let me see here. Speed up tickets. So it might give you speed up tickets for building or produce or animal processing. Um, see, you can just collect it from there. Boom, didn't even have to open it. Ah, bananas are done, yes. I don't know, is anybody OCD with the way that they they do that? Thank you, Neff. Okay. So we did that. We talked about that process. Let's see if I can remember what comes next. Um, I think the creamery came next. So this is where you get into what your animal produces. So there, collected that. And that blue star you just saw is your experience point. Um, I believe it's double points for animal processing. Um, it's single points for crops. Um, I think, again, with VIP, that changes to a higher amount. I'm not really sure. Uh, but as you can see here, okay, so again, I have a large portion of stuff unlocked, if not all of it. Um, but you would take that milk and then some of your crop resources, beets in this regard, 15 minutes to make sweet cream. And then you just do that. Now what speed up uh, coupons or speed up tickets do, you can see here, speed up production. Um, it just speeds up production. So if I had the five minute one, uh, actually, you know what, let's go to animal processing and I can show you better from there, I feel. Do I have anything I can process? Yeah, chicken eggs. A lot of chicken eggs. Okay. So if I hit up speed up, and you can see you can either finish it off with this, you can buy tickets if you're out of them, but you get a lot of free tickets from the tasks that you do. And, and like just daily logins and stuff like that. But you'll hit use, right? And then it'll give you an option to use 
all of them, or enough to pretty much complete it, which we'll do this time. It'll automatically go to your inventory. Now that being said, um, you kind of want to be careful uh, when you're doing that, because let's say it's like you saw 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Well, I just lost 30 seconds of that ticket. So sometimes you can almost get it to where it's 10 seconds away from being completed and you save yourself a ticket. <clears throat> As you can see, this is still locked, level 30. Uh, max level at this current point in time, I'm going to go ahead and call is one of two things, either level 46 or level 50. That is because the last building you can build is level 46. Um, but it's kind of an odd number. And, you know, in, in the gaming industry, they usually go for, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30... So it would make more sense that it stops at 50. Um, maybe there's a special reward as you get up that high. Who knows? But I feel that it's one of those two. Okay. And as you can see here, water collected. I've got one left, but you can collect three up at a time. Um, and it, it's not like the time, like if you don't collect it in enough time, you lose those chances of collecting that you see down here where it says daily collect. It just, the timer stops. So... another one of those now one thing I'd like to see them do at some point is for your house because you can change the look of your house again long press um, I think this was a reward but as you can see this paintbrush here and this isn't for all buildings but um, there's reason to believe and we'll go into that again at some later time as to why you could probably change more than just the look but as you can see here we've got Western style, Viking style. This is what I'm talking about. So when it comes to the clothing styles, there's a Viking style, a European, Arabic, Japanese, and a Chinese style, as well as Korean, and the pirate style. And most of these are rewards, and we'll get into why that's kind of like an in-game kind of thing to look forward to. Oops, I didn't want to move that. Okay. <clears throat> So another thing is this owl right here. Uh, remember I said you can see your orders from there? Well, this owl, boom, also takes you that. It'll also show you your currency types up across the top. Um, I failed to mention that. So you can see there's gems, um, gold, and then your three types of currency. Let's grassland, desert, and ice field. Again, I call them tokens. It just seems like an easier thing to call them because that's what they look like. Like tokens on a game board or something like that, like a chess piece. Um, one of the early things you want to really focus on, because um, there's a thing called cargo, we'll do that right after this. But um, in your order list is don't be afraid <clears throat> to delete. Let's say it's something that is expensive. Let's see here. Something I don't like. Okay. See, and. The little hand there is get help. Um, you can increase the amount of get help you get, again, with VIP, I think, leveling up. But I think you start off with, like, two or three. But uh, other players can actually finish the orders for you if they have the materials. But they have to have all of them. They can't just have, like, two corn milks a piece of, and, and, and one piece of corn. They have to have the whole list. So this one right here, these steaks take, I think four hours to craft and he wants two of them and right now you can see it's 158 you would think that's good but then you come over here and look at this one 337 gold um and these items are much faster to craft like yeah this one right here was at 319 i can craft all of these let's see i think these taken fresh creams take what 45 minutes each so it would just be faster than having to and as you can see, I already have four on hand. And a lot of items you'll, you'll have odd amounts of. It's, it's really good to manage your crafting in between certain things. But this one, this one isn't that great. So let's see if I can find another. See, here's another one. Look at that. One stake for four hours of wait for 79 gold and 38 tokens. Only seven experience. Useless. So you can delete that. And... What you'll end up getting is you can delete several and the timer goes up and you can speed it up. I would never do that if I were you. But um, you'll get new 
orders. And there's a chance you'll get something good, there's a chance you'll get something else that's garbage. Just keep deleting it, your orders until you've got a pretty hefty lift of good stuff. So, again, um, VIP affords you many things. That in includes the amount of gold you get is increased. But just going over just basics. As you can see here, this one's 319, 337, 238, 209, 168, 158, 143, 379. So as you can see, and sometimes the token to gold ratio is a big factor, or it could be experience that you're more worried about. Who knows? It's up to, you know, however you decide to play. But as you can see, you can kind of build your order sheet to work for you. You know, like continue to do your, your crops, continue to do, you know, craft your produce crafting, and then let the orders come to you, and that way you're creating a fantastic list that really increases your profits. Now, the other thing that they'll have you do is come down here and talk to Sailor John. Um, now, Sailor John is just one of two things. One, you can trade him for um, bait, which is, again, as you can see, a bit pricey for bait. Um, the yellow bait in almost ensures bigger fish from certain plots. Um, but as you can see, it's expensive. You can craft green ones, I think, um, that are kind of similar. I'm not sure where they work or how they work. But again, because fishing isn't a robust system right now, it doesn't matter what you use, really, unless you're intentionally trying to get a big fish, you would need that. But it's, it's all random chance anyways at this point. Um, so the other thing Sailor John helps you with is cargo ships orders. Now, this is a fresh cargo. No, this is not a fresh cargo ship. Actually, yes, it is. So next ship arrives in 3 hours and 21 minutes. And it even tells you what the next order is, which is good because that kind of helps you prep for what's coming. I think they usually only last 12 hours um, to get them completed. Um, typically, if I finish cargo orders before the 12 hours is up, I leave it. I don't. You can send it home early, or you can speed up the arrival, as you can see there for gems. Sending it home early doesn't cost you anything, but it's kind of ridiculous. I feel to do that because that takes away from the time you have to actually, you know, prep for what's coming next. So, like now, I know there's cheese coming. Okay, cool. I can build a whole. I can make a whole bunch of cheese. Now. If the ship hasn't left, you can't see what's coming next, but you can at least get an idea of how many of the basics you're going to need. How many sweet creams, how many eggs, you know, goat milk, etc. But um, what it'll be is across uh, these three boards here will be three barrels with the three items on it. And it'll tell you the amount you need, and if you hover over it, it'll tell you how much gold you get from delivering that. And every time you complete a row... Um, one of the three rows, you'll get a bonus reward. So if you finish the first row, you'll get like, I think when you first do your first one, it's like 100 gold or 78, something like that. Then when you finish the second roll, you'll get a, 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 a pretty much double or triple the sum um, of the first one. And then on the third one, you'll get gems. And I think the first one you'll get three. I get eight typically on mine now. I don't typically worry about the gems because, again, you get like anywhere from five to ten gems a day. If you want to do that, go for it. If that's how you feel like it helps you progress, but I just feel like if, as far as uh, uh, how would I put it, proceeding in the game, it, it doesn't really afford much to it. Okay. <clears throat> So moving on, you've done all that. The next thing you'll do, oh, and this board right here is events board. Um, there were a couple events like a, uh, a what was it? A wasn't a farmer proficiency. 
I think it was like a skill test or farmer skill test or whatever, which was pretty much proficiency, but just how how good of a farmer you were. And um, I think an athletic track um, plot was uh, the reward for that. But these three here will stay here. Um, as you can see, level, and you can see what like what items you get from that. And then as you level up, you'll get items, and then you'll be given uh, an offer that you can take. And you can see VIP points is in there. Uh, proficiency whiz, uh, that's just how well you do. And again, there's information icons everywhere. And a lot of people don't realize that. Just hovering over something, tapping on it, or looking for the information bar provides you so much information. Ah, here it is, the farming tournament, which... Yeah. Uh, 48. Uh, but that's over. I can't remember exactly what the rewards were, but I'm trying to think. I don't know. Anyways, um, another thing when you first start the game, if you start at some point soon, uh, while we're in this crisis, one of the things they do offer you is a face mask, which is fantastic. Um, it'd be cool if it had different colors, if you could change the color. But, um, yeah. Um, now, there's things you can buy. Uh, there's a couple things that are rewards. That's a reward. This is a reward. And so is this wonderful dog tail. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it doesn't tell you. And then there's a white rabbit uh, fluff, which you can preview just about everything. Um, but I, being taken by this game almost immediately decided to spend way too much money please do not do this um, it is a bad idea <laughs> but just the fact that it glows like I don't know too many mobile games that take the time to put glow effects into their game like typically it's just you know it's some 3d art with not much detail I mean you can even see my my shadow at my feet right it even matches the movement right like for an, a basic mobile game because i mean it, it almost feels like it was rushed but for a basic mobile game it's pretty pretty cool uh let's see and the hat glows too so i love that what's even funny is so i got this big glowing butt but i can add a tail to it um that's another thing you can even zoom in like, you can play, not like first person, but dang near close. So, like, right here. I dig that. Again, for a mobile game, like, look, look at the, here. Look at the lighting effects. Right? Like. Again, not everything is super detailed. Like, even the flowers, I feel I've seen, like, th what is 3D grass, you can't see the uh, air quotes, um, that just is a four, a, a two piece, two, two, two 2D images just stacked differently, and that's, that's the grass. And this actually feels like it has depth to it, you know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, now fishing, you can fish pretty much anywhere. There, pretty much anywhere. There's a couple of water spots where you just can't. Um, actually, let's look and see. Like here, off the bridge, you can't. Not this bridge, anyways. But um, all right. So that's another thing. Let's look, go ahead and look at fishing. So it'll even tell you the output of the village water bank. And there's certain plots you can receive that um, give you uh, the ability to fish. Now, they're not that easy to acquire, and the fish are more rare, um, and it costs more energy, but, yeah. So these are the fish you would get from here. And then yellow perch, I don't think I mentioned that one earlier. Um, and you start off with a basic, really basic fishing pole, which, as far as I know, there's no way to unlock these newer ones. Oh, I guess there is. Hold on. Uh, you need 50,000 and a whole bunch of iron. Wow. See, I didn't even realize that. I do want to see. 200,000. 
a hundred thousand. Wow. Reduces fishing difficulty, so I want to point that out. So there's also stamina in the game, which is the purple stuff right up near your, your level. Um, the purple lightning bolt. So that refreshes at a rate of, and I think, again, um, oh, it's at max capacity. I think it's about four minutes, but with VIP um, and certain items and leveling up, again, that, that changes. All right, so let's go ahead and fish. I did that. I mean, I get perfect every single time. You see that went away? I just wait for the next one. You caught something. If it's a big fish, it'll say, you, you caught a big one, which is a... Actually, I wonder if I can trigger that as a mini game. All right, so this took me a while to get. You pretty much just need to keep the fish in the circle, which... Boom. Even that. See what I'm saying? It's, it's pretty easy, because even just the tiniest tip of it, it's perfect. And you'll get a yellow perch. But even if you fail, guess what? You're still going to get a yellow perch. But I think the size, the weight of it matters when it comes to that. So maybe there's a fishing tournament somewhere down the road. Which would be pretty cool. Um, you know what? I've never noticed that owl sitting up there. What does he have? Binoc ah, okay. Uh, so in the village, there's a few people. Um, one thing you definitely want to... Uh, well, let's just continue with what you would find in the tutorial. You would next have to go talk to Mount Trainer Martin, which the fact that they have him keep slicking his hair back, I assume he's meant to be a Fabio um, style character. Um, I, I can see a different world in your eyes. Yeah, okay, buddy. Cool it. Okay. So you can talk to him about stuff, but... You can trade him. There's mounts you can get. I do like to point out that this ostrich name is Beavis, which automatically makes me think of the Beavis and Butthead movie where they're in the desert for whatever reason. Um, but the em emote that they created for him right here, this, 100%, you cannot tell me. That's not Kazooie from Banjo and Kazooie just reskinned. Like, look at that. That that's Kazooie. Ostrich Kazooie. And we'll get in the chat features later. Um so you'll talk to him, he'll give you a horse. No you can't pick the color. It's always gonna be a brown and white horse. I do find it odd. And I'll show you why. Um so this is that button I just pressed. I call it the checklist button, um, but it's pretty much just your menu button. It opens up your other menus. The thing that looks like a pig's head or a dog's head is your mounts. Um, the first mount you get is this guy, and it's a horse with bunny ears. I don't, I don't understand. Um, but. Uh, some things that you'll notice. So cargo capacity, he can hold one at a time, uh, one item at a time. Uh, trade distance, which is the amount of, I call them clicks. The game calls them miles. I know that this game is in places where they've got kilometers, so it's easier to just call them clicks. But 105 squares away, I guess is the best way, or 105 clicks away. Um, and then the speed, trade speed of 25. Angelo, you see there's an eye up there that gives you information. What tells you up there? Speed, his actual speed when you're riding him is 8.5. An average mount for trading. Um, as you can see, there's an empty box there. Maybe it'll be flavor text. I don't know what idle does, to be quite honest. Um, I've clicked on it, and as far as I can tell, it does nothing. I can set mount, and it goes right back. So, is what is. Um, but uh, let's see, and da, 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 da. and then the heart, as you can see, it's a one. You can't get out off your horse, pet it, or anything like that. But I assume that has to be in there somewhere at some point. 
because there's a, there's a marker of there of what is that a hundred thousand so there's got to be something to it where you can pet them take care of them raise them something um the next one you'll get is Paulo. Paulo is a wild boar he's considered an average mount there the different the three different land types currently um have different mount types so uh, actually I can show you here this bee Flora the bee a mysterious glowing mount suited for grassland trades it's got a glowing pollen when flying at high speed so of course as you can see it glows I love it um, but uh, um, because it's a grassland mount it moves faster when it's going over grassland areas or going to grassland trade hubs so I can tell you uh, there may be like a two minute difference between the horse and Paulo, between Angelo and Paulo, but Flora uh, is about half the time of both of them. Um, so back to him, just so you can see what I'm talking about, it being a new game and preventing people from going overboard. The ostrich is 98,000. Now that may sound outrageous. Believe it or not, you can do it if you don't buy another plot don't upgrade your plots continue to uh, to monitor your order sheet do the cargo orders and and you know the best way possible without losing produce maybe up the grade to VIP which gives you a bonus as you level up um, as far as how much gold you get and then it also gives you gold I think every day as well but so it's not entirely impossible i've seen a few people with this i've seen a few people with the lion too but uh i just don't see either of them as worth it right off the bat can you rota rotate them you can that's cool let's see see from here not kazooie emote definitely kazooie um but i also notice off to the side uh, you can see me clicking on it i think the little pig head I assume at some point you'll be able to buy pets because when you look at the load screens you'll see dogs um, and there's actually a dog somewhere else on the map that's a little pug he's also the load screen the load bar um, character as well you can't interact with them but I assume the fact that he's sitting in a corner of the land hidden that there must be a quest associated with him at some point um, he is usually like Right over can I can't click anywhere else okay well pretty much that bridge up at the top that's where he's at when you cross that like right there um, but you'll notice on this map here there's a couple different things this uh, village that's up here to the left far left you can't get to that um, currently even though it looks like there's a path there's not um, down at the bottom where that yellow arrow is that I placed down that's actually an archway you can go underneath there and go to the edge of the water. You can't fish there, but it's just interesting that you can even get down there and there's nothing there. Um, on the other side, um, where you saw the mounts from your mount screen, that statue is right there where that water is um, on the map, like right there. Um, now, and then there's another like little tower and farm further down and then some really beautiful purple and pink uh, trees and there's map information player new task task complete ready means that there's items that are ready for you um, cropland are the brown squares and then villagers are the blue ones um, let's see you can see here the current weather um, and here's a tip and or trick or some information to learn so certain crops grow giant crops when the sky is clear that would be beets carrots and lettuce um, giant crops take a considerably longer period of time to grow um, and they're great because they're used for claiming those rewards but you need like 300 of each right um, to me with my current play style it's just about leveling up and getting higher up there gaining gold I'm not really worried about the rewards until I can afford better plots and to decorate things. 
So for me, certain, so like right now it's overcast, now would be the perfect time to plant those carrots, plant those beets, plant the lettuce, right? But when it's clear, which I believe is the next day, maybe just wheat, corn, um, tomatoes, etc. right? Um, then, uh, and I believe they change every 30 minutes. Uh, there's a whole day cycle. And then down below, gathering fish, gather fish points reset at, uh, in two minutes here. It's every two hours for your plots. And you also got to keep in mind that when you change a plot, and we'll get into plots, when you change a plot type from one to another, it will uh, reset it. And you'll have to wait that those two hours. Okay, so we talked about gathering resources. Okay. So let's see here. So as you saw, when you gather resources, it drains your stamina. Let's see. Yeah, so it's like four and a half, five minutes to gain one stamina. Now, one of the things you're going to have to do is, in your tutorial, is social. Um, first thing it's going to do is it's going to send you to the Earth Goddess Gaia, to her farm. Which, like in any game, is just a showcase of everything you could possibly do in yours. So as you can see, it's very beautiful. It's its own private island. There's no village attached to it. The different fence types, vegetable types... All that good stuff. All the things that you'll be working with produce-wise. Special plots. Come on. So as you can see, and I, again, I'm kind of spoiling the, the whole fun of it. Figuring out what all this stuff is. But there's different plot types. You know, lava. Um, volcanoes. And it's the current, uh, I forgot to mention that, the current uh, season lasts three days. And if you click up at the top of your mini-map, that little blue snowflake, you can probably see it. Um, you click on that, it'll tell you when the season ends. But it's typically three days or so. Now, what I wanted to get to talking about how I thought it was crazy that you don't get to keep your animals out they just disappear. As you can see here, these animals are always out. They're not doing anything, but they're always out. Um, at some point you'll get bees. Pigs are, as far as I know, they're probably much further down the road because I know there is a pork house, which I think is like a sausage, hot dog place, something like that. And then there's ducks. Um, uh, okay, see, I didn't even know there was turkeys in here so that's a new one for me and then see this is what I'm talking about special animals so you got your regular black and white cow on certain um, overcast or rainy days I believe if you have cows out and you give them affection you see that exercise equipment out there there's a it's real funny because they can stand on two legs and lift these like weights uh, but a trampoline and then a treadmill um, a golden cow, which is this guy over here, might come to your farm and give you deluxe milk, which you need 300 for a reward. See what I'm saying? It's so chance-based, it's not necessarily worth getting into it. You know what I mean? But yeah, just a nice place. So it'll send you there. But at some point, you have to make your own friends. See, there's the little dog. <clears throat> okay. Back at our farm. You would think I'd like this being from Texas. Oh, hey guys, I'm from Texas. Um, but no, I like that more rustic look. Not something so, uh, So, 
Texas, I guess, is the best way to put it. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. You've probably seen me click on it a couple times. Up here is your level. At the top left-hand corner, it shows you your level, your name. To change your name, you do have to have a ticket for that at some point. Um, your gamer, I, your account ID, which I always suggest save it. Um, your likes. Currently, I don't think likes do anything, as far as I know. But it shows you who you've liked and who liked you. And I'm sure at some point that'll have some effect. But as of now, no. Achievements. You can get, again, gems just from completing tasks. So um, use animal shelter to produce 360 beef or complete 300 orders, etc., etc., etc. And it goes up and it stops at three. So you'll get one, two, and then three uh, gems. And as you can see, the list is pretty long. So it's not like you're not going to get, get gems. Um, there's rankings, which there is a player level ranking. A decoration uh, ranking and a proficiency ranking and then you can see your tools from here now when you click on upgrade it'll take you to who you need to talk to for that but it is a task that only pops up when either you have the items or when you reach a certain level and unfortunately when you click on them nothing happens click on upgrade though it'll take you to the crafter okay Uh, pumpkins. Boom. Easy. See? Easy. Didn't mind doing that one. My God. Steaks just keep popping up. And then you can watch videos as well that'll pop up on your order screen from, um, what's his name? Village Elder Alfie. Uh, that'll give you gems. You can do that up to three times a day. Here's my thing. I prefer to go talk to Village Elder Alfie, Alfie in person. Because when you watch the mysterious clip, as he calls them, from him personally, instead of gems, you'll get a stamina potion. Which, if I'm correct, it would be the instant stamina potion. Um, it gives you back 10 of your stamina. Which is extremely helpful, especially when you're gathering resources. You gotta keep in mind that a lot of your tasks are going to be resource-based. And sometimes you can line it up where it's like, collect four resources, gather three grass gather another three grass okay great but other times it'll mix match you'll gather like six of something go do animal produce and this is oh i need another six and or you need to fish and catch two blowfish which is a random chance again and it has to be regular blowfish not blue blowfish green blowfish or anything like that and it drains your stamina so fast in a single day and that goes back to uh the social thing when you add friends um, and you will need to add friends, uh, at least five, as you can see where that little arrow that's missing up at the top is, uh, right above the Earth Goddess. Um, you can have up to 50 friends. Um, I do suggest that if you're, if you're playing this, I mean, you're making friends, if you're not going to actually play, don't bother the bigger players. Just do some of the smaller players, if you, if you can, that are currently out there. If you see them doing something, you know, look around. Um, or if you are going to befriend one of the players that have, like, you can see some of them on here. Some of the ones that have been here that are, like, level 27, 26. If you're going to befriend them, keep in mind that their list is probably already pretty full. But if you're not going to be an active community member, there's not really a point to befriending them. Like, just forego it. But if you feel like you're not going to be active... Like, let them know, like, hey, I may not be active. I'm just testing this out. Can you add me as a friend? And if I'm not back in whatever days. But it does tell you on here how many days somebody's, how long somebody's been gone. I feel like it's a little bit off because it'll say 24 hours, one day. And then I think not even two days later, it'll be like 16 hours in on the second day. It'll say two days. And then once it hits that 24 mark, it'll say, that 48 mark, sorry. It'll say um, three days. So it can be, kind of be misleading. But, um, so there's one that's a two day. I know for a fact it's, well, it might come back. Well, if you're a VIP, you'd want to stay. <laughs> um, trying to see if there's any that have been a while. No. 
but pretty much you can share uh, stamina with I think yeah up to five people and I think ten people a day can share with you now you'll see the blue hand on them it means that they have orders that you can help them with so you can go and complete their orders the other place to see that is if you were at their farm right where this calendar is would be a button to either add them as a friend or to see those orders you can help out with uh, let's see what else can we go into you can remove crop cropland the same way that you put it down you have to be actually standing on a spot so be careful you always will have to start with the spot you're on so that's what you have to keep in mind when you're making those adjustments uh, so what else let's go ahead and go into a couple other features so there is a news feature where you can see news maintenance notices that the such the gift box is all the special um, uh, sales they have going on um, gym mall gold mall daily pack daily pack you get a free chest every day, so be sure to check on that. If you are a VIP member, I'll click on that. There's also a free chest. And you can actually increase with gems. That's why maybe that's what you want to do. You click on that arrow right up there uh, where this bar, blue bar is. And you can buy VIP points to increase your level. But as you can see, 1,000 points is 500. I am at 7. I need 20,000 to progress. That is a lot of gems to be saving up. So I'd say if you get around level three, four, I think four is a good place to stop because it grants you one additional uh, crop plot or crop square. And it even tells you here what you get. Like at eight, it gives you another two. So you go from 25, at level 4 you go to 26 and then at level 8 you go to 28 and then it actually goes up I think up to 30 total um, but again special rewards from that the star you see over here underneath the menu uh, the mini map um, is again your events as well another place to access it um, and then this little gray thing you see underneath it doesn't pop up right now. Hey, who's that? Hey, caveman. Hold on. You're faster than me and I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> um is much faster clearly uh where were we um we just did social um and the next thing is uh guild clans or guilds clans whatever you want to call them. so guilds you can create your own there's let's see let's go to settings um it's going to be not necessarily a requirement but something you can do at level eight um there are a lot of top guilds out there. Instinct being one of them. Um, BK... I forget what it's called. Hold on. Let's go look at some players that are in there. BK Sheep. Digifarm is a good one. There's Instinct. Uh, let's see. I think those are the top two... That I know of this guy over here is just in a league of his own as you can clearly see he's also a shrimp I don't know if he is watching or will see this but he's a shrimp I don't know I want to point that out um yeah, there's one of ours level 32 rank 32 I mean nice um and and we'll get into the chat feature right now but this game is released in a couple places um they we're supposed to, as far as I know, have the servers kind of separated. Like, here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and go to the chat thing up at, up at the top. When you click on the chat box, it opens up the actual chat menu, which, which you saw earlier. And there's emotes you can do. 
now there's a a 10 second uh, cool down I don't know why people talk like that but they do no it's 11 seconds I was wrong a 10 second cooldown 11 second cooldown on when you can text again now when you're like in guild chat same language or in your own village and that lets you know that there's somebody in your village and you can talk to them there um, <laughs> um, but it's only like a second or two seconds uh, world chat it's 10 seconds and that's because there's just so many people in world chat at a time and the emotes are very sensitive you seriously have to drag off to the right to prevent yourself because if you try and drag in the emotes themselves you'll accidentally tap one and it will insert it see that was me swiping and I accidentally hit that <laughs> okay uh, so same language in world chat you're going to have people of different cultures different languages there's even been a very prominent bot in fact you can see her there who put it she put that heart emote right there um, and the one before that and all of that um, it's a bot clearly or somebody with so much time on their hands it's been like that for seven eight days now I'd say of just constant yes you hi hey uh, Cheryl yes you no no that kind of stuff just one person just one uh, but from here you can click on people's faces um, go to their farm, invite to guild, add his friend, etc. Uh, but even though it says same language, you will find it's it's multicultural, different languages, different. When, do you, what do you call somebody who speaks several languages? I don't know. Polyglot, and then it. Uh, guild chat. Now, the cool thing about guild chat is when you're in a guild, you can actually request items from people and it always be in batches of four and I think the cooldown is four hours um, but you can only do crops um, I don't think you can do seafood no animal products crops which includes seeds I think yeah or not seeds but like the actual vegetables themselves and then resources is not available at this time either so but you can put in a request and uh, it'll go in here into the chat and people can send you that stuff and you can collect it, which is helpful. Uh, let's see, back to world chat. Um, and then you'll kind of see that there's like three or four dots um, right below this chat box. When one of them is glowing, it means you have a notification in that chat group. So the first one being world, second one same language. Same language will never light up for you, neither will world. But guild chat and um, village will. And anytime somebody visits you, it will light up. Um, let's see, what other screens do we have here? So we did social. Next up, I guess, is like the big thing is plots. So from this screen, you saw that we have plots. You can either click on the lock or you can um, walk up to them in your farm area um, it'll tell you a dollar you know a gold value um, but uh, the first plot you're gonna get is miraculous plot now as you get um, a move up in level um, for these basic plots you will get free plot shards which are what you need to craft or upgrade your current plot um, also it increases the amount of empty space available to you for building if I understand that correctly um, the decor score will also go up in some cases, not all of them, um, but also the resources and the types of resources. So in the Miraculous plot, you'll see that it starts off, it's going to start off at level 1, this one's level 5, um, but you'll see the level 1 by the items that are there, right? And then you see 2, so when you upgrade it to a level 2, those are the things you should be seeing, and it goes up and it goes up. Um, from experience this miraculous plot because it's a one-stop shop for everything you can possibly get so far I don't think anybody has seen a level two or higher item come from their miraculous plot I might be mistaken but I can assure you I haven't seen pine cones or marble or definitely no crystals and it might just be based off of your tool level but from what I can tell 
it just doesn't pop up on there at all. Now, let's see, the next plot you're going to get is not that one. <laughs> you're going to get, not that one either, Vitality. Vitality will be like over here. Um, yeah, Vitality would be here. Hope plot will be there, and then Wish plot will be back there. I don't know what the other ones are going to be, unless it says Ambition plot. Um, yeah. All right, so so the next one you're going to get is going to be Vitality plot. Is that right? No, I'm questioning myself. It might be Vitality plot. Anyways, as you can see, certain... After that, I call these basic plots. The basic plots have different things attached to them. So one of them will be wood, or you know, wood-based products, or logs, trees. Another one will be grass, wild hemp, and the other one will be ore, rocks, etc. Um, you'll notice that throughout the other plot types, um, that they all have a specificality to it, except for special ones have it even further drilled down to something else. Special items, fishing, that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, one thing that's constantly annoying is that red dot will never go away until you've actually upgraded the ones with the air hose on it. But anytime you um, get enough shards, and most basic plots require 60 shards. Let's see if I can find one that I just recently upgraded. So, volcano, no, let's see. Volcano is considered a special plot, it's 100. Um, there's that athletic truck I was talking about. Uh, let's see if I can find... So here we go. Oasis plot. It was 60 to unlock it. Or no, it was 50 to unlock it. I think it's 60 to upgrade it to level 2. Level 3 would be 100, etc., etc. And then for the special plots, it goes up. Now, Oasis plot, although it's a basic plot, you can see there's fish there. And you need those fish for those special rewards. Um, other plots, like Snowy Field, it's at level 2. Um, it's just wood. And then Black Rock Wood, which is weird because it's called Black Rock. It makes no sense. Um, wilderness plot, that's wood. Sandstone. So the Sandstone lot is going to be the very first one you get that's different, that you would most likely replace with the Vitality plot because the game wants you to try for that iron ore that's down here. Um, because when you get iron ore, that upgrades your tools. You're going to need two, four, six, eight, I think 12. Two, four, six, eight. I think 12 or 14 um, iron shards total to upgrade all four of your tools. Luckily, some of them are a bit easier. So I think with the axe and the gloves, you need flowers for the gloves and iron ore. You need some wood and some iron ore for the axe. But the hoe and the pickaxe is, it needs four iron ore because you have to smelt it into iron bars. And we'll get into those as well later. Look, hear me continue to say that. So like ice field plot, grass and fishing. Um, some of the more rare ones are, I can tell you, it may not seem like it, but eh, I have had, look, I've got six for that. So I feel like that's rare to me anyways. But you got, um, like, the glacier plot, okay? One, it has a special fish, which you need, again, for those rewards. But it also has special items that you can, resources. Um, small ice cube, crushed ice. And that is because if you can level it up to level two, you'll get an ice angel sculpture in the middle of you can kind of see it, at least on my screen. It, I'm, I'm watching myself on TV at the same time. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> looking at the image, it's pretty much a statue. You can see there's a garden plot, and there's a Stonehenge plot. And you can upgrade your Stonehenge, um, I guess the rocks, by collecting those items and putting down decor. Let's do this, actually. Uh, yeah, no, let's put down the stone hedge so I can kind of go over what I'm talking about. Come on, Zippy. I know her name is Flora, but I like this. Zippy to be. 
Okay, so this, believe it or not, is decoration. You can remove it. But if you tap on it one time, stone hit. And as you can see, to upgrade it is outrageous. It's outrageous. You need 7,000 gold just to upgrade that. That's one plot and a half, almost. So if you have two plots, you're pretty much, you can almost unlock two other plots with that alone. Uh, but what it'll do is, so upgrade it to a level 2, and then when you're on level 3, as you can see from the image um, in the background, um, the Stonehenge decoration changes. And to do that, you need, let's see, it says locked, hold on, I know there's a way to show it. Let me see what menu it's in. No, do that. Well, there's a way, but it shows you what you need, which is sculptures. You need one of each sculpture in um, that comes with de decoration. So if you come down here and you go to exclusive in the in the crafting menu. Um, so this is the bread piece here is buildings that you use for produce. Um, this is decoration technical stuff and this is actual decoration um, yeah, other than the treadmill and the trampolines that stuff is in here for some reason um, but uh, like floor tiles that kind of stuff uh, are all here but you can see and here's a good example of that um, kind of hard to make out but it says like pirate plot penguin plot Let's see if I have any that are Exclusive. Here we go. So as you can see, so I unlocked the lava plot, right? And I got it up to level two. So you can build a magma column, a magma column, or let's see. See here's Stonehenge. Stonehenge starts here. Small crop circle. I need to build one of those. A wild boar. A boulder arch. I might have to build two or three of those. You know what I'm saying? So and that's how you would upgrade these plots. Um, but plot shards are gathered from trading from the world menu and this is where we will show you just how big this world is in fact I haven't even thought to measure how many squares it is but alright so you can kinda see the mini map up there oops I just got rid of my chat oh well um, so you can see a mini map off to your right um, and if you click at the very top, it says world list. I'm sure they're going to add more once this game becomes more popular. But you can kind of make out there's a snowy region, a forest region, a desert region, and at the very bottom there's even some water and some stone. Um, but from this view you can see... Where am I at? You can click back on your head. Um, the people around me, some of them are guildmates, but... And that white hand means that they have orders you can help with. But uh, you can see it's kind of busy here with the little s houses, right? And each square is pretty much, except for like in certain areas where there's like mountains, it won't let you put your house there. And you'll get transfer tickets. My, my tip is don't use your transfer ticket unless you know what you're doing. Um, you want to, in my personal experience, playing the game with the few days I've been playing is position yourself between all three token trade types because if not and it takes and you're too far away your caravans can't get to those trade hubs or they're so far away that by the time you get to your trade hub um, all the orders have been completed so as you can see specifically in this area of the map it's super busy and that is because again you want to be close to everything. Where I'm at is smack dab between winter, the forest, and the desert. So that's kind of, see, right there. And look, it shows you all my guildmates. <clears throat> now, that being said, did I have a guildmate move? Who's that? Oh, yeah, close by. Um, that being said, um, oh, here's a, a fun little thing. These little brown um, diamonds that look like plum blobs, right? 
those are the caravans that you can physically see. And you can see other people's caravans. And what makes that, why that's helpful is that when you're going to a trade hub, see if I can find one nearby, here's one. This is a, a grassland. So it gives you some information. So one, there's different levels. It goes from one to level four. That being said, you think that level four, um, well, hold on. Let me explain it visually. I can't go more than level three. Okay, I thought there was fours. Okay. So, no, there is there is level fours. I know there's level fours. Maybe there's just none around me right now. Um, so, level three, as you can see here, 62. Chance to obtain turtle plot. So, pretty much you can break plots down into three types. Again, same as the tokens. Desert, grassland, ice field. Um, though, arguably, lava and magma plots and stuff like that are stone, which haven't been unlocked yet. And then forest plots, like the fungus forest, maple forest, sunflower. That's forest, not grassland. And then there's ice plots and then snow plots. So there's a little bit of diversity, but they roll it all into those three. But it shows you here how many of the currency you need as opposed to your stock. It shows you what you have the chance to obtain, which you have the chance to attain, obtain turtle plot shards, the amount that you would get, or max you can get, rubber tree seeds, and the max you can get, and then um, usually a building material and the max that you can get. Now when I say max is, you can go to this level three trading pro post um, and get turtle shards, but it, there's no guarantee it's 12. It can go up to 12, but there's no guarantee. Um, you can share the location in world chat. You can even uh, save the location, which would be down here uh, when you go to look at it. You can filter. You can even look. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but looking at this one here, it tells you the weather, the grass. If I click on this, I want to see something. Yeah, okay. So let's go back to that. So here where it says trade down at the bottom, you see it says five of five. Well, that means that there are five orders available for you to pick up, meaning you can go five times. Well, if you're in a heavily populated area or you're going to send your caravan to a very heavily populated area that's far away and it takes 35, 45 minutes to get there, those people that are around there are going to hit that before you do, if they're smart or if they're online. And when that happens, and you let's say you spend 62 of your tokens to send your caravan there, well, you get there, your, um, your caravan gets halfway there, all the five trades are gone now because somebody else hit them before you did. Well, your caravan comes back and you lost those tokens. It was a waste of time. So that's why positioning yourself with your um, a transfer ticket is very important. Um, when it comes to that. Yeah, it might feel like it's a little bit overpopulated or there's, because like there's sometimes you can even click on a trade po post because there's too many people. You gotta zoom out um, just to be able to click on it. But it may seem like there's too many people and you might want a, a nice, cozy, quiet corner of the map, which is what I mistakenly did. The, I, luckily, I ended up with two tra transfer tickets. But when you do that you're positioning yourself in a way where you can't get one of the basic points to the game which is shards unless at some point you plan on using gems to buy another transfer ticket and that's another villager that's that's in town we'll talk about that now when you click on trade it'll tell you some things so up at the top you can see where it says trade speed it's see how it's red it's telling you this mount might be a bit slow for that um, I switch to the B and see it saying, oh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a re reasonable speed. Um, the other one is trade distance. Now here it says 163 of 68. What that means is your mount can go up to 163 clicks miles away. Um, and 68 is the actual distance of the trade hub. So as you can see here, the B, it takes 10, 10 minutes. I switched to this and the horse would take 20 minutes. The pig, 
or the boar, Paulo, would take 18 minutes. And they can only carry one item, so I assume at some point there'll be something that can carry more. Now, um, this here, it just tells you what the, what the weather's like there, right? What I don't understand is what the red arrow means. I haven't seen a green arrow, but I'm assuming it means there's less of a chance of you getting what you need or let me see ah okay well I just figured it out now uh, live so what it means is because these are basic they don't have any um, special abilities over grass grassland but because this bee does it it moves faster over grassland and that's why it, it's not showing that so I just figured that out right here awesome I'm smart I swear um, and then it tells you where your bee, your mount is, and then you can even track them. And like I said, it'll show you a line and where they're going and such. So again, you can pin stuff, people's homes, etc. You can remove them. You can always click on your face to go back. Um, you can even search for coordinates if somebody gives it to you, and you can link coordinates in in the chat. Uh, da -da -da. Now, another thing, okay, so yeah, we're not done. So where's that yellow thing we just saw? So this, this is a hot topic, I personally feel, for this game. Um, these are called waypoints, as it clearly shows, and it shows you time left three days. So it's extremely expensive. You can do it up to four times, as you can see, um, but pretty much, what it is is, let's say there's something that is too far away that you want to get to. You want to get down to the desert plot, but you're all the way on the forest side, right? Okay, you can um, purchase waypoints, and those waypoints kind of extend the range of your caravans. But as you can see, one, it's expensive, and it has a very limited time of three days. So probably not the best idea, personally. Um, hopefully they change the pricing on that because uh, it is a bit outrageous. Now the world map, again, it's huge. There's so many people in every corner. Um, like I said, you can see there's stuff that's locked here and some of it is locked, locked. You're not going to unlock it. Well, I think most of it's uh, unlockable, but I know there's a few of them that was it the center. Yeah, so there, in the center of map, you can... No, you can't unlock it. Okay. Because for sure I saw some that weren't unlockable. Anyways, you can unlock other regions, if I'm correct, for other people. So if I click on that, it'll show you what you need. I can actually unlock that right now, but I'm a jerk, so... <clears throat> what did I say? Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see here. So that's that, and when your caravans return, you'll get a notification, and underneath that mini-map, um, you go back to the world map, underneath the mini-map, you'll see uh, they have like little pink boxes, it'll give you boxes, you go back to your farm, you go to your menu, you go to your bag, and then the boxes will be down here at the bottom, and you open them up, and that's where you see if you get your shards or not. So then you craft those shards. And once you have enough, and you can see here, like, um, all plots, what you've already unlocked, what's still locked. And so, like, I really want Sunflower. It's pretty cool. Um, succulent plot is very necessary. So, some plots, the items that you specifically get from them, so as you can see, these aren't normal items, like in some of the other ones. Cactus flower. But, so... The garden plot, when you acquire it, gives you the ability to craft, um, like, like other special plots, special decorations. One of those being a floor tile made out of flowers, right? Cool. Unfortunately, you need the succulent plot to gather succulent leaves to craft it. So you need other plots. Now, when you go to other people's farms, and here's another key factor. We'll just pick... Actually, you know what? Let's pick a guildmate. Actually, let's pick... Let's pick... I know who we should pick. 
Oh god. I know the perfect person. Hopefully they're smart enough to uh, stop me right now by banning me. If you're still watching. Or maybe you left because I bored you. Uh, chat. Oh, hello. <laughs> and if you're chatting on with me, trying to chat with me on Twitch, I... I accidentally removed it. I don't know how to bring it back up from a mobile device, so... Okay. Oh, there you are, buddy. Hi, buddy. <laughs> so, when you're on somebody else's um, farm, you'll notice there's a box over here where the orders used to be. So, and you can complete certain tasks by going to other people's farms by, you know, gathering resources. Now, here's the deal with that, though. It shows you how much um, stamina you have or energy you have. But you'll see a fish hook, water, a pickaxe, and you'll see um, a scythe. So let's say you somehow accidentally run out of corn. You did it by mistake. You crafted too much of something and you ran out of corn because you had the, an even amount. Oops. So what do you do? Well, you can one, use gems to buy more from a villager. Or you can go to another person's farm and if they have grown crops, you can harvest it. It does cost energy though. Energy though. See now that's something I've never seen before. It won't let you pick a giant a giant one unless you have a thousand energy. I guess that's a way of preventing you from stealing their giant crops. It's not a bad idea. I can see how you could abuse that. You can just keep a a whole bunch of giant items on your farm and then just have somebody else come by every day and and scythe it up so i can see why they would remove that ability but uh so let's say this was corn i can then use energy for each square and gather gather it now that being said seven i can only do that seven more times on his plot for the entire day that means if somebody else came and did it then it's done that's done for the day until the server reset at midnight so if you have friends that you're playing with and they've got a special plot, they've got the succulent plot and you want to go harvest some succulent leaves, if you're not there at server restart or if they're really popular or high level or they're, they chat a whole lot, they're already a prime target for those smaller players to gather resources from. So they will hit it almost instantly. As you can see, the pickaxe, that is actual resources. So it's at zero, meaning no matter how much I try, I cannot collect any resource from his plot. Let's see, no more gathering chances. Now fishing is 10, so I can try fishing 10 times. And again, it'll show you it's minus five uh, stamina for that, but you'll see that number above it, 15, that's how many f ch uh, fishes or fish there are available for fishing. Um, and then watering, you can water people's crops um, and decrease their time. Again, if you're working with a guild, let's say you're focused on getting, uh, let's say, silk or fir trees, which are seeds you get from trading at, at trade hubs, right? A fir tree takes 10 hours to complete. So if you had a guild of 20, 20 people or so, um, and then you each took turns once a day, or how do I put it? As you can see, there's 10 water, so you, you can only water something up to 10 times, right? So let's see, you had one fir tree. One, so 10 people from your guild could use a medium-sized one and decrease it by a significant amount. Let's say it's a small water. That's 10 minutes you can take off, including the one minute you can do. So that's 11 minutes at a time. So you can kind of work together with that. Um, if you're just trying to be friendly, it's very helpful. I never really water my crops because, I mean, there's a timetable there anyways. So, I mean, it's, it's I just find it pointless. A, a minute and three minutes isn't enough to do much um, unless you're in a rush.
Yeah, you would think. Um, so what was I saying? Uh, da, 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 da. I wonder, I haven't even tried this. Can you interact with other people's animals? No. Uh, so I'd like to get them using that exercise equipment because it's a hoot and a half. Um, yeah, so a pond is also going to be something that you're pretty much required to make right off the bat. It says that's where you keep um, fish. It's not. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> it's not like it does anything. Uh, let's see what else. Um, it shows you their level. You can like their farm. Again, I don't see... He's already at 3,000. I don't see a reason for liking somebody's farm at the moment, but I'm sure at some point it will have uh, gravity of some type. Um, there's also an eye right here below the pickaxe in case you wanted to, you know, screenshot something. And at the very bottom you can see there's a UTC, negative five, tells you pretty much the game time. And the horseshoe makes you mount, dismount. Um, funny part is when you go to the world screen from somebody else's farm, it'll be where they're at. So it's a good way to learn a location if you're trying to move somewhere and you can't find coordinates. Um, let's go back. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is already a long stream, so at some point uh, we'll cut it off. I'll, I won't completely reset my farm the way I had it, um, but I'll at least get production back up to where it was, and then tomorrow if I have time after work, um, we'll stream again and get into decorating this. Um, well, let's see. What other options were we going to look at here? Um, so, okay. Back to the menu. We've got... We were talking about Guild a while ago. So, from here, um, I can't really show you the search, uh, search feature. Um, but I can tell you this. Um, you can have up to, as you can see, 100 members in a guild. Um, you can be invited to a guild, uh, you can be ex uh, put in an application to a guild. If you're going to search for a guild, you have to put it in exactly as is, or use the ID. So you can see there's an ID in the top right, the name is like Duans, that's my guild, I created. The D has to be capitalized, the A has to be capitalized. And sometimes when you complete something, it'll automatically put a space after, if you're on a mobile device. Um, you want to remove that. <laughs> Um, so you can change a couple different things if you're a guild leader. Um, the message, which is only so long. Um, play style, there's casual, active development. My guild is, I like to say avid, we're avid casuals. Um, but we also want you to be active, so active. A lot of guilds have a three day, three or four day removal period or a seven day removal period. Where if you're not back in a week, then you know, you're in, considered inactive, you're booted. And it takes 24 hours once you leave a guild to be able to get back into one, a, a new one. So um, there's membership type, which is require approval, closed, or free to join. Level requirements. And I don't know if it goes past. Yeah, it does. Um, and then you can select language. And you can do disband, you can edit the emblem, and you can randomize it. There's several colors, uh, several different objects. Um, I think, yeah, you can even change the name, I think. Uh, and then there's permission settings. So when it comes to guild permission settings, it's based off of... Right now you can't change them. I'm sure at some point you'll be able to. Um, you also have a very limited number of, as you can see, um, leadership roles. So there's yours, which is guild leader, guild master, deputy, which would be second in charge, um, minister, and then officer. You can have two officers, one minister, and one deputy. So choose your leadership wisely. Now you can see there's other things here. It says like coming soon, coming soon. Um, 
right now I'm not exactly sure what that's going to be for. It looks like there's going to be guild funds, so that's probably a bank. Um, the houses probably will be maybe some village type thing. As you can see from the map, you can see my guild members and where they're at. Um, coming soon, I would think, is probably going to be tasks for the entire guild, which would tie into the level there. Um, being said, you can attach a... Let's see, I'll give you two reasons why I think PvP will be in this game. Reason one, change look. Back. So on your back, you can put either a sword or a blunderbuss, right? And then reason two, I believe PvP, in, in some form or fashion, will come to this game is let's say I click on this square and I want to bookmark it. Let me bookmark it. No? Okay. Bookmark. Important. Friendly. Hostile. Well, what, what does that mean, hostile? Typically, if somebody's hostile, they're, they're your enemy. Well, how do you form enemies? It's got to be, in a game anyways, it's typically PvP. So, I would assume there's... That's got to be coming. Um, let's backtrack to here. This review is almost over. If I'm boring you to death, so don't worry. <clears throat> okay. Back on the farm. Let's see. So mail, mail is where if they send you something. So as you can see, there was surveys, events, which I got the brown dog tail. I think everybody did, even though it says you ranked this to this. I think everybody got it. But you know, again, new game. So I think it kind of be lax on ranking systems since they're not doing much with it. Um, what else are we missing? In the settings option, now some suggestions I would have for them. Um, you can link your IGG account, which is the creators of the game, or at least those that manage it. Um, your ID. Um, this is where I would have suggestions, and that is basic settings. Um, Believe it or not, you can't turn that music off. I've tried the ambient creature sound effects. That you can turn off. But as far as I know, well, I guess there it is. But I would prefer a slider. You know what I mean? Um, oops. I would prefer a slider for that. Um, I do like that it has performance setting. That, that's great. But another feature I would like is brightness. Um, at night, it can get really dark in this game. And some people me included, like to play with really high um, contrast so it's easier to see. You know, I'm getting older. What can I say? But uh, I have bad eyesight too. But it would just be nice to be able to, to change that ability. Um, let's see what else is on here. Control settings. There's tapping and then just joystick. And joystick, if you switch it to just tapping, the joystick will go away. It makes things much harder. Would not suggest it. Um, then there's a game guide. It takes you to a website. It's really not that much more in-depth. Uh, you're better off figuring it out, either from watching this or just playing around with the game. But when you hit Submit Question, that's also submitting a ticket in case there's an issue. Um, rewards. I think that are villagers and what they do. So you saw the innkeeper, she had, I don't know, yeah, did we go to the innkeeper? I don't remember if we did. Let's see. So innkeeper, the innkeeper you can collect items from, right? So you can see it's clothing, and you need vast amounts of all this stuff. Again, some of those are rare items you can't get anywhere else. You have to uh, wait for specific conditions. Then you've got... The roving vendor. Trade. So this is where you can... Uh, you probably heard a ding earlier. 
that's a musical flower and you can set them up and make musical patterns out of them but this is where you would get your tickets you can see the transfer ticket permit is here transfer permit yeah and then you there's two ways of purchasing them as you can see the amount is outrageous 50,000 again that is what five plots right there five plots worth so wait 30 30 is a plot 10 is a plot 3,000 so 43 so that's three plots that you could possibly have opened up if you would just use your free transfer ticket and set yourself up in the right place or 500 gems which again always you can buy stamina pots here and as you can see there's a small a medium and a large um, I know smalls do 10 mediums I think do 30 and I'm gonna assume the large ones do 50 maybe a hundred I'm going to say 50 is probably a best bet. But it's super expensive. Not worth it. Then you've got a parents change ticket, name change ticket, and a megaphone, which will display a message across the middle of everybody's screen uh, from the world chat. Um, let's see, who else has special stuff? Okay, so I was saying if you happen to use up all your corn, right? You can come to her. What's her name? Shopkeeper Lily, you can trade and you can use gems to get back what you lost. You only need one, is the thing. It just takes longer. So the, the lower the level, the less gems you need, the higher the level, as you can see it increases significantly. I think it's also time based because um, pumpkins are higher than banana, but banana. And, Pumpkins require the same amount, whereas strawberry is below um, pumpkins in level and cost more. So maybe it's time based. Uh, and again, there's no sounds to these villagers or really any good flavor text, but hopefully they change it at some point. Let's see. Ah, so then the craftsman, Ollie, he's the one you're going to talk to about upgrading your tools. But he also redeems prizes. And this is where you can exchange for uh, your house's uh, outwardly design. And again, they require some special items. So this one probably, the one at the bottom is probably the easiest one to get. Because you can get, I think, all three of these. Now this one you got to get from Turtle Plots. But the, the blue and the yellow one you get from your own personal lot. And then you need giant lettuce. Um, that's another thing. Most people, when they come over here, they just look at it. They don't realize if you click on it and then click on that, you can now get information. So this is what I was talking about where you can get like information on the special care, on the special animals, right? Cannonball pumpkin, a pumpkin variety that may only appear on a pirate plot during clear summer days, exchange it with villagers for special items. Um, see, ah, here's one. Truffles. Set up a treadmill, specifically a treadmill, on a mushroom plot during rainy autumn days. So the season has to be fall. You have to have a mushroom plot. It has to be rainy, and it has to be a treadmill on there. At which point, mushroom pigs... Uh, may be attracted and find truffles and give you truffles. So it's a maybe. So remember the weather changes every 30 minutes. During autumn, it's mainly uh, dry, hot days. You would think that'd be in summer, but it's usually rainy in summer from my experience and hot and dry during autumn for whatever reason. So when it does rain, you have a really small chance of getting something as you saw I only have two and I've been playing for seven days and it's rained a lot so what can I say but yeah it, it gets a little bit crazy when it comes to that but that's why I feel like that's that's end game stuff right there um, that's really all the special items except for if you talk to uh, let me go back up I just realized I feel like that bell in the middle of town has to be important at some point. So typically if you talk to Alfie, there'll be a button here that says 
your mystery clip, and then you'll get free stamina potions. And I think that's pretty much it for as a review for the game. Um, tomorrow we will um, set everything up to build the farm. Uh, just so it looks pretty, we can talk about the game a little bit, answer questions if if anybody is even out there watching. Um, we can even talk about the history of farm sims and, and why I like it. I mean, yeah, this was pretty much just a, a tutorial, a guide on getting started, um, how the game works, because there's a lot of questions out there, and I feel like uh, I feel like it would go a lot smoother instead of just trying to explain to somebody what my typing, my poor typing skills into world chat every 10 seconds on what to do. A nice little video on what to do would be uh, would be helpful. So hopefully this somebody found this helpful, informative, um, intriguing. Maybe you learned some tips and tricks on how to make this work uh, for you if you decide to play. It's a fun little chill game. Music, although it can be repetitive, will definitely put you to sleep and chill you out. So that's something. Um, so thank you for watching. That ends my stream, but you're gonna you're gonna get the look into the void here in a minute. Boom. Thanks everybody.